Monday. While everybody's week oh, is yeah. starting up, we're kind of <laughs> winding down, but keeping the racing spirit going here on a Monday. I am Callie Francois with Keith Fustel. Keith, let's take a look at that track today. The weather mm -hmm. that we have going on today. Listen, the temperature has dropped but it's still sunny out. So a nice 45 degrees. It's it's turtleneck season, Keith. It's there. It's I've got there. one. I've it's got here. the I guess you call this the mock turtleneck, you know, under oh, under yes. the uh, quarter zip, a little little warmth. You're, you're you're battling the elements here. You know, it's uh I got, I got a pretty, pretty game, pretty on. game effort for you uh, Listen, this morning. Listen, you guys Keith has given me a lot of props, but Mm -hmm. This this dress has some weight to it, and okay. I have two propane heaters right next to me, so Those I'm heaters. not as tough yes. as I look out here on All set. Right. They're going to heat me up pretty well. <laughs> Let's go ahead and take a look at race I'm number one. Not touching one. anything. Okay, go ahead. Race number one, claiming 16, never win three. We're still on the turf today, a mm. mile and 16th year on the turf. I, I got to love it. Keith, you go with the – you and Tim Tullick both go mm -hmm. with the number five. I have left this one off of my ticket. Sid Finch, Bruce Levine, Toledo on top. We get a night. We just get a. It's a proper drop down to mm -hmm. this level. Mm -hmm. The right kind of drop down. Second time in the barn. Second time off of a little bit of a break. And I, I think the key uh, for Sid Finch is just to kind of relax early. If he avoids that kind of rank opening quarter of a mile, if he can kind of settle in a position because it's a race that doesn't have a, a tremendous a lot of early flow to it. I think he can get get up into position. He's laid fairly close in some of his races on the go back, but. The key is he comes out of key races. Uh, much stronger heats in New York. This is the right kind of a move, an aggressive move. You're going to take a little shorter price. I think he's maybe like the most likely winner in the field. Um, but, again, as we talked about yesterday, right. the key with my picks are most likely winner. I'll tell you if I really are. I don't love this horse. I right. think there's other value in the race you may want to look at. Maryland Pride at 4-1 to one has just had an abundance of trouble his last two couple of races. He needs to get clear by the quarter pole to bring that run. Uh, password Protect is a horse. He draws outside. He's taking some play and some sprints. What's he going to do stretching out, Cali? He's a horse that get, usually likes to get ridden right from the get-go, and he just kind of gathers himself and then goes along, right. goes along, and finishes up. Well, the mile and a 16th be to his liking. Can you kind of fool him? There's some family in there I, going family back that can handle a route of ground. And there's some trainer, Anthony Fair. Mm -hmm. You're recently 19 for 63. That's 30% sprint to routing. So I mm -hmm. feel like this one has just hasn't had the best of luck going Agreed. at these shorter distances. Just give the horse a chance. Maybe just let this horse a Again, and especially when you're talking about a come from behind sprinter going short, this horse is going to be sitting mid pack going around these two turns. I think this is a great yeah. spot for this horse. I also go with, we both go with a 13 civil row mm -hmm. underneath. I just let the, I, I had, I, I didn't love the, I, the Levine horse is an obvious horse, but mm -hmm. I just wasn't in love with him enough to be putting yeah. him on my tickets. It, runners are runners, and we have some runners in here that are just still ever so consistent, like Seville Rowe, who you have underneath, uh, off of that Maryland Million Turf Starter handicap. Mm -hmm. Just missed it. Just, just missed it for second. It was a really nice run. Uh, what I love is that was race number one. That was a lower league laser win on mm -hmm. starting off Maryland Million Day, so that was a tight finish between all of those. So uh, Keith Fiesel, 5 one nine, three. I go 3, 13, 3, excuse me, 1, 9. Keith Fiesel is 5 one, nine, mm -hmm. 13. So let's go ahead on to Keith's early pick four. Right. That starts in race number two. This is a claiming 10 event that starts it. But Keith, how do you start off this uh, ticket? Yeah, no three deep. Uh, no singles. No singles. Uh, you, we stated it ad nauseum here, these, these race cards. To find a single, it's really difficult. And to, you know, hang your head with these races, I got to right. spread around a little bit, get some more value. And uh, the racing office has done a good job putting together these fields. We've had the turf stay intact. The field's been good. Looking ahead to next week, a couple of these races, when I was doing the morning line, just unbelievably tough. Just trying to nail the favorite down was difficult for me. But that, Let's go to the early pick four, though. One, two, seven, Crimson Rocket Panamine, a super statue. Uh, I think the winner's going to come from one of those three. Race yep. three with the one and the six. Little value. I'm going to go against uh, no fooling dude. A big effort. Maryland Million Day. But some more value here with the one and the six. That may be, if you want to add a little bit, go there. Uh, race four. Four, nine, and 14. Uh, see if Battalion can keep it rolling, Callie. I, and, have, I have it one on top as okay, well. Okay. Race yep. five. We're going to wrap it up with uh, three horses. Ladra Dofici, Thunder Boss. Of course. And uh, – 
Alioxy, Ali Ali Oxen Free for yes, Damon Furster. So love there you go, game. $27. We got some notes on that one and a stat. But there's the early, uh, your kind of your base ticket there, $27 add if you like. It's a good ticket. Mm -hmm. It's hard to, and just a big kudos to the racing office for coming up with these competitive mm. races that we have Strong. going on. You'll see in my ticket, I do find, I ha I'm forced to find a couple of singles, uh, but competitive competitive fields that we have coming up here uh, that we're going to just touch on pretty soon. But let's talk about race number two okay. for a second. In this claiming 10, never one, two, six furlongs on the dirt. Uh, we're talking about superstitious with, excuse me, Gilberto Zerpa. JV uh -huh. Toledo gets the call for this one. It didn't get the trip last time out, and we get the drop down as well. Yeah, also a second time gelding. It's an angle I like, and it's attack move here. You know, 40 down to 10, a little bit scary. First time in the barn has been uh, good for this, a uh, good angle for this uh, trainer, Zerpa. Had a winner yesterday on the turf course. Really good ride there, Caramelos. It and was, on, yes. On that it was winner. a very, ride very by good. It was a nice price. So well. I, I looked at this last race on, on October 2nd. It was a day where speed was pretty good on that sloppy sealed surface. Horse got shuffled just a little bit early, dropped back around the turn, and shifted out about mid-stretch. I like the effort this horse kept coming on late. I think he'll kind of stalk in here. I don't know if he's quite as fast early as Crimson Rocket from the rail and to the far outside Siberian, but I think he'll draft in a good position, like this second-time angle here, a second-time gelding angle to kind of stalk and move into it. Uh, the two Panamine had a lot of trouble two races back. Uh, lost action, you see that in the short comment, the echo base comment there, lost action half, shifted out, came running, two races back, a good willing effort into a lone speed. This pace might be a little bit contested, as I talked about with the one and the nine. So Panamine, I think, another one that can rally into it. We have a video of the one, your top selection, yep. right? Crimson Rocket. Crimson Rocket. Here on McGee, deadly with this kind of move, uh, you know, turf to dirt and these lower cl climbers. Just just mm -hmm. a huge, huge effort here, though, Ka Callie. Uh, that was for the maiden uh, 24. That was an off-the-turf event, but, man, with ease, just rattled up in hand, gets the lead, and is going to widen. You see the short comment there, ridden out. Had some trouble in that turf try. You see the comment, hopped at the break, kind of moved up in between horses. I'll tell you what, gave pretty willing chase to deep stretch before fading very late. I think Caramanos has to get position early, right. sit just off Siberian, because I think Siberian's just going to have to go from the outside. But he's shown the ability to rate and make a move into it. He's going to be tough up near the front. I think Caramanos is going to place this horse mm -hmm. pretty well. Keith, you go 7 at 2, 1 and 9. I go 1, 2, okay. 9, 7 in that race. Race number 3 starts the er, the rainbow pick 6. Mm -hmm. And we've been having this nice little carryover here yeah. at Laurel Park. If uh, 32,385. That's going to climb by the time we get to race number three and where that starts around 111. And then just taking a quick look at my card, I do. I was forced to find two singles, Keith. So I mm. go in this, I go with No Fool and Dude, okay. and then I go with the single in the end on Ferry. So I bang, I, I've got, I bookend it with singles and then races four, six, and seven. I mean, just to touch up on that race seven, that's a nice, that's a nice allowance in mm -hmm. race, excuse me. Race number six had allowance optional claiming. That's a nice – I couldn't leave a couple of – I just couldn't leave any of these off of my ticket. They're just too intriguing. And race number seven – I may touch a bit wide on this one, but I go for a price in the number seven underneath with Jackie A at twelve to one. So there's a lot of there's a lot of nice pr uh, attractive prices in that field right there. But uh, there's a lot to offer in today's Monday racing card. I give you a fifty dollar ticket to uh. get things going. Uh, so hey, d d calm down. You need to, it's relax. Monday. I don't have fifty bucks <laughs> left. You know, we, we need to get to Friday to get some money. Well, Your fingers well, tired after punching in all those all those digits there on that big six <laughs> ticket, man. All over the map. I well, love it. We'll, we'll get to the late pick five. All then. Right. So let's talk about race number three in the mm -hmm. starter allowance. It starts the rainbow pick six, seven furlongs here on the dirt. And we both land on No Fool and Dude. It's my, it, excuse me, I land on that with Tim Tully. Mm -hmm. You land on the rail horse. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But let's watch No Fool and Dude. It's a good effort here uh, in the Maryland Million starter, October 22nd, going seven eighths of a mile. Really sharp from the gate in this big gaudy field of 12, was able to kind of go ahead and clear early. I think the key with No Fooling Dude was the ability to get the pressure and then battle back. Look, mm -hmm. he looked like he was going to kind of fade away mid-turn as the Wolfman took the initiative there. But, no, he stays on, and he's going to battle back for second. You see that comment? Very game to the wire. Did he fire his best shot that day? Can he bring it back, Callie? What do you think? 
I think, I mean, I think he's able to, I, especially off of that performance, not winning uh, so flashy, I think mm -hmm. he's able to bring that back. Okay. He's pretty, t he's overall, this horse stays relatively within his range. And that was, a, like I said, that was a pretty good number. I'm going to key in on that sequence of the July, both of those July races at Parks that gave a nice performance and then bounced a little bit, still still ran well in numbers uh, when climbed up to the uh, claiming tent from the 7,500 7, to the claiming tent at over at Parks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the fooling dude's going to have a little bit of company. Pepe and Haywood comes back, is familiar with this racetrack, showing a lot of speed, running some numbers. We talk, you take those Delaware figs with a little bit of grain of salt. Right. But been game, been battling a long way. So I think he's going to keep uh, the seven honest, even EJ's revenge to the outside coming in from Charlestown. That horse ran really good at Timonium. I remember that race at a big, big price. Mm -hmm. Just faded a little bit late. So couple price shots in here. Instigated for Jose uh, Ramirez. This is a horse that's familiar with Laurel. His run here has run long. His one at one turn mile. Right. Uh, has one at a mile, 16 mile eight. It's been primarily sprinting, coming from five and a half to seven, which I think is a tough trip. It's but yeah. with the speed that's in here that's going to immediately leave, and with lifespan, I think he's a little bit quicker than him. I think he can draft into position without getting used too hard. So getting back to a track, a butterfly is going to be hungry. I think he can get within range, two or three lengths by the by the three ace pole. He can steadily matriculate up to those leaders and maybe grind out at a price. I've got six to one on the morning line. I think he'll settle in that range. I saw all of that. I saw everything that you did. What about anti poison underneath yeah. Resensha Summon? This is a horse that likes this seven for long mm -hmm. distance. That's when he we saw his last win back in July. This and this is gonna be one of these speed horses that you're talking about. Going to be going to the front or just sitting right off of it. He's gonna carry some pace action mm -hmm. in this race without a doubt. He's got uh, I mean, I wish we should have shown this video as well, because he was in tight at the break last time, rushed early, three wide, and really battled and held well to the wire. 7 H you talked about. He's, he's got a couple wins at this distance. He's familiar. He's got that kind of chase, 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 and let them kind of come back a little bit. He'll exactly. grind into the, the yes. faders and, and, and maybe kind of pop at a price for a barn uh, that can hit with this rider, too. These two we talked about, they, t they team up for a good ROI and a good win percentage. One, six, seven, three there in the in the uh, third. And I take a strike at seven, six, three, one. Let's go ahead mm -hmm. to race number four, which, as I mentioned earlier, starts the late pick five. Mm. We've got to carry over about 13,000, just over 13,000, as you can see. Again, that's going to be climbing up it's a, it's a, now this is a bit of a nice sequence oh, for yeah. this late pick, late pick five there's mm -hmm. a chance at a little bit of money here and let's go ahead and start that with the starter optional 20 a mile and 16th on the turf scratch the two the five six ten eleven twelve and thirteen that leaves mm -hmm. you with the number four on top mm -hmm. on conquered spirit mm -hmm. i like this move because i have this horse i was thinking about having this horse on my ticket underneath but i opted to go other directions so give it away keith Little oppo picker for me, huh? You don't have that four anywhere in those four little numbers down at the bottom. I love it when I picks go up on the board and I'm against the grain. Now, that the, I think Unconquered Spirits, the speed of the speed. I know the 16 has a little bit of, of pace to it, draws way outside. Let's see if, if Marquez really wants to gun hard. Unconquered right. Spirit wasn't quite prepared at the break last time at Delaware, came off a little funky. Tried to take the rating, move up into a tight spot at the quarter pole, and still gave effort to about the 16th pole before fading. This is a guy who comes in now for the tag. He, he likes it up front. I think he's going to get the right kind of flow. For Barnett's one here before, okay, Juanita Bennett, I like Unconquered Spirit to kind of walk the dog and maybe pull a little price upset. Why not? Mm -hmm. Jaime Rodriguez, I love that move. I, I I like this setup for him as a rider as well. But let's talk about the 14 Battalion. Mm -hmm. uh, Bob Claceres, Horacio Caramanos. I mean, it's it's a very easy pick, and the, which is why I went with this horse on top. Just And the the barn is on fire. Mm -hmm. I mean, the barn, as of late, winning two in a row, row winning last race, 7 for 27, 28% win percentage with that angle right there. So once he gets these horses in, these good yeah. spots and rolling, uh, he can keep the flow going with Claceres. Again, most likely, you know, a winner or horse to be right there. It looks like Battalion. He's found a home. Caramano's getting along with him beautifully. Yep. Got, a, got some really old pros in this race on the turf. Yes. This is this is a <laughs> rock solid starter option. It is. 20. You got you got to love it. Uh, yeah, I think he'll get in position. He he'll probably ramp up to be three or four out of a far turn. And if he just continues sustaining runs, he's going to be difficult to deny. I think my horse is going to be looking in the rearview mirror and maybe seeing Battalion coming uh, at mid-stretch. So 4-14-9, let's talk about Golden Decision, another one yes. you can really kind of trust, Callie. He, he just never runs a bad race. What's he, right. eight years old right now, heading towards nine, and uh, come, wins on and off the turf race last time. I now. love Handling it. Handling any kind of kind of surface. Uh, familiar with Laurel uh, has a win. I uh, was a second out of one try. 
I think his positional speed is really going to help him, too, because you're looking at the race with Unconquered Spirit and Extra Sexy Daddy. This horse will draft in and get a great spot. Maybe right. he's a little bit quicker uh, than Battalion. But uh, great race here in race number four, as is the rest of the card moving forward. Competitive heats galore. Absolutely. At number eight is Kendama. Tim Tullock's mm -hmm. best bet of the wow. day, so we'll okay. let him dig into that on our paddock show. We'll be right back. On a, we're going to go on a commercial break, and we will talk about the rest of this Monday racing card for you. here on a set. We mm -hmm. haven't chilled out yet. I just asked Keith if he was cold and he's doing pretty uh, well despite the fact that the heaters are not on his side of the set. So you're doing pretty well I so grew far up this way up in, uh, up in the country. So, you know, we used, to have, we used to have to rent sun. You know, we never got oh some. We had to gosh. buy it or okay. rent it. You know, that, that's, okay, a, that's, that's the elements I grew up race in. Race number five okay. is this maiden 45. Six furlongs. Here on the dirt, Keith, we've got a stat on your mm -hmm. number six. Ali Ali Oxenfree, Damon mm -hmm. DeLuvigo, Horacio Caramanos, Love everything about this horse, including the name. Come out, come out, wherever you are. No, remember <laughs> that. That's pretty eerie, but uh, you know where that, that was, was from, don't that, you? I don't, but that oh, was okay. really Cape good, Fear. whatever it was. <laughs> Robert, anyhow, <laughs> Ali Ali Oxenfree, trainer, Damien, he's been on a roll. Last two years on the dirt's pretty good stat here. Five for 13, 38%, 10 for 13 the money. Three-year-olds and up, first-time starters mm -hmm. with Horacio Caramano. So those two guys hey, have teamed up for a while now. Go. There's your ROI, 482. Yeah, it, it, she's going to have to be ready. A lot of patience here. Four-year-old firster by Uncle Lino. Uh, right. First full out of this mare that was a five-time winner. So the homebred has got her work cut out for her. But, man, this barn does well. You saw the stat. I like the draw. You've got Thunderballs just on the inside. Ladro to Fici. Maybe, just maybe, we can pull a little bit of an upset here in uh, debut. It has the stats every – you said she's got to work for it, but she has a great team behind her. As mm -hmm. you said, included Caramonos and Dio Duvico together. Dio Duvico with a first-time starter. Uncle Lino with his first-time starters. I mean, the stats just really help this filly out today. Let's talk about my top pick, your 9-5 to five Thunder Boss, Brittany mm -hmm. Russell, Sheldon Russell, uh, giving a little bit uh, – hopefully hopefully getting a little bit of an assistance after that second time off, a little bit of a, lay, a big layoff. Yeah, no doubt. Came back and – Improved speed, right? Was ready to go right up to the lead. Uh, had a little advantage over Ladra Defici, though. Had a little bit of trouble. So do we have a video of that one or no? I don't think I brought one for that. You didn't. You oh, just brought sorry. the stat for us this race. Okay, well, that's it. That's all you're going to get. But <laughs> I, I think Thunderboss, again, I was a little surprised, you know, to see that much sharpness, but was ready to go, no doubt about it. Uh, Ladra Defici, they'll be a little bit closer with a better break. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I agree. I, there's a lot. Ladra, Ladra Defici just needs a little bit of help, and hopefully he gets it today, but has some tough stack competition against him, as you mentioned with the six and the four. But race number six is this allowance optional claiming 62.5. This is a nice mm -hmm. competitive race that we have here, Keith, for going six furlongs on the dirt. We've got the comeback with chickiness, but you mm -hmm. you take a strike. You take a strike at Moco Gold, which this horse actually does really look to be on the improve. This filly is on the improve. The blinkers went on a win at Charlestown and comes back and just absolutely whistled in professional fashion. Uh, I'm going to give her a shot here. I've got her lined uh, eight to one on the line. She might come down a little bit off of that, but she kind of targeted a pretty quick horse last time in, in uh, what is that, Miss Serenity or like the Serenity horse of uh, Salzman. And she just right. went by with ease and kicked away, very eager to the wire. So I, I I think everything hits. And a little stat here for uh, Farrier, 4 for 15, 27% with two-year-old winners last time out. So there I think go. this is coming back. ROI is good, 4 490. I got to like that. I like Tap and Josie as well, though. Um, Tap and Josie has got to run straight. This jock's got to be ready with the stick in the left hand, turning for home. She was laying in, unfortunately, because she was much the best in her last. She's going to get the flow in front of her again. She's a loop and swoop candidate one more time. I'm not worried about her leaning in. I think that Jock just put his head down and wasn't paying attention, to be quite frank on that. I'm so let you talk about that. You're the rider. Yeah, so that's what I saw. <laughs> okay. I, I like so I like this. I'm not. I'm just fine with this outside po post for Tappan Josie. We're at seven to two, but honestly, mm -hmm. I think she might. This is uh, Tim Tullock's value. This is your. This is Tim Tullock's price play of the day okay. as well. Uh, so I think she's going to come off at a little bit shorter of a price. But chickiness. We've got. Here's the thing. We have chickiness. Our Maryland Million mm -hmm. Lassie winner in. In this race, we have her second and third. We're going to take a look right now at that effort with both Chickiness and Skylar's sister, who is the two in this race. 
Yeah, bet down, and, and she was bet harder than I thought. Down to 90 cents to the dollar in the Maryland Million, and she didn't really look like she was going to get there leaving the three eights as Baserati and Skylar's sister kind of opened up on the field. But she kind of gets in the progression here, keeps on coming about four wide, uh, really sustains a pretty good run. Okay, and is able to kind of collar the leaders in deep stretch and go away. She's going to get another kind of similar trip. It might even be a little bit more contested with a horse like beautiful Carla in there that has speed to add to the equation. We've got to figure out going to go from the inside, but kind of leveling off really, really well here the last 16th of a mile and going away. Right. Uh, I probably got her line too high at, at three. I just I thought this race no. was fairly tight, so maybe maybe she gets bet down to eight to five, then nine to five. But Tapping Josie is proven. I know she got beat by cheekiness up there at Delaware, but uh, she's proven well over this racetrack. As has Moco's Golden Skyler sister, another one on the improve for Dale Cap. You saw a big effort there. Did all the dirty work chasing. A lot, a lot mm -hmm. of fillies on the improve. Uh, one that I didn't include, Jeannie in a bridal, I think, at a price. Not up to win this race, but that was a big jump. Not big jump in numbers, but still big jump in performance. That's a bit of a different filly that we're going to be seeing. So it's going to be interesting with what we see coming out of Jeannie in a bridal as well. I go 10, 8, 7, 2. Keith, okay. you go 5, 10, 8, 2. In this ultra competitive, yeah. nice, nice allowance optional claiming. So let's kick over to race number 7, this allowance, straight restricted allowance, a mile here on our Laurel Dirt Track, and you go with the you go with the number four, which I love. Mm -hmm. I have this horse underneath. Dr big, dream big dreams for Brittany and Sheldon Russell. Really, this horse is just knocking on the door every time. Yeah, uh, gelded 819. So this is going to be what? Uh, third time gelding? Yep. And it looks like he, he may just be right right now. Uh, right. This horse showed some talent before. Came back a little bit dull, put it together last time, had a little bit of contested flow up in front of him. But right. he looks like he's got that reliable run. A 110, can he bring that run back? We'll show that video. But Dream Big Dreams, I think, will sit, sit a trip, be able to save ground. Took, took two rating last time and finished up quite well. I think he's even going to be a little bit better today at the one-turn mile. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I, I just really quickly, I go with crabs and beer, a bit of the obvious pick on top. This horse is just so versatile in a lot of different mm -hmm. things that this horse can do. This horse can take it near the front. This horse can take it near the back. This horse can take it on any different type of surface. Just I'm absolutely, I'm a big fan of this horse. And then you, of course, have Jamie Ness, who's turf to dirt. Yeah. Stat is okay. Uh, just tried. Uh, really Was it maybe a bit more forwardly placed in the Maryland Million turf? Mm -hmm. uh, could have come off of the pace a little bit more. That's where this horse has shown some decent numbers at, at a win. So we'll see what happens if, there. But I like the number six. If there's only one little hiccup on his page that he's going to have to show us, Cal is a fast track. Right. He's, he's had nine starts, and his top buyer is a 61. That's my only question. I love the way he's improved, and, and he is versatile in, in, in his races. But uh, I probably talked him right into the winner's circle there. But uh, he's been good. He's made a lot of money so far. He's got the right kind of running style. Can he bring it on a fast track? That's the only kind of little right. asterisk next to him. Uh, the two, 110, we've got video. Yes, we do. Yes, okay, I nailed it that time. I think sometimes I get the videos right. You do. And, and man, uh, I was just kind of shocked with the effort uh, that this one brought. He got a great trip a couple races back at Timonium, got that speed developing in front of him and brought the run. Then he had a little trouble uh, two races back on October the 6th. But, man, contested pace up front. Gallant Gold, who we'll see in here, they, they're doing battle three across the track uh, past the three eights. And, he gets out into a clear run, and he just loops and goes by about five wide and with a powerful burst and just widens from this against this field. Eight and a quarter when it's all said and done. We saw this with the Corrales runner. Was it last week or was it early this week in the starter? They win. They run these big races. But out of 44, you know, sampling here over the last couple of years, 2% sure. of them have come back to win. And that's, See if yeah. this horse can buck the trend. That, that's the only, sure. from a betting standpoint, you have to take that into consideration. We'll see if he can do it. I think Rusty's G550 is able to get away clear. He could go a long way, but a gallon gold might keep him honest. So that first quarter of a mile is going to be critical for Rusty's G550. He's got Cruz. He's been riding well. He can stay a trip, though. That's going to be a critical. It's going to be a critical mm -hmm. first quarter for all of these horses in the race. The way it sets it up, I throw in Jackie A uh, mm -hmm. underneath. Uh, the horse is uh, doing well. The horse is breathing fire. And the last time I said that about a horse was Radical Wright, who ran well after mm -hmm. that. It put in a nice work. Uh, this move, it's not a move he often uses, but he's okay with it. Fifty percent off of a short sampling as of late with Dale Caprano from Charlestown to Laurel, and that puts us. 
with Keith being four five at two six. Mm -hmm. I go six four seven five, and let's go ahead and take a look at our nightcap here. This uh, claiming ten thousand in this eighth race, seven furlongs mm -hmm. here on the dirt, which is which is I think the big caveat in this race is the seven, tricky seven furlong distance. But some of them I think are going to nail it in this race, Keith. We can come up with the Cali Francois breathing fire play of the play of the day. <laughs> Have a graphic of you, you know, and just. <laughs> Run that around Halloween or something. Oh, That'll be good. Yeah, yeah, and your witch's outfit and a fire coming dragon out. Dragon lady. Yeah, yeah, dragon, dragon lady. lady. Be perfect. Be oh, perfect. all kinds of Game of Thrones <laughs> uh, references to that, which I do, I do love. So, but let's. You've got a about, single, right? In the I, last. I do. I've got mm -hmm. a single, and I feel really good that. Because I was worried you had a video. We've got it. We won't play it yet, but we have a video on the seven. But uh, mm -hmm. you have Summer Velvet on top, Anthony Ferrier. I mean, this this is just a it, it's a proper move. She was uh, part of a really wicked pace on Maryland Million Day. You see the internals, 22 and 2, 45 and change, and held to mid stretch before fading. Uh, coming back to a spot, she takes advantage of the condition, right? She's a three year old that's won four races. Mm -hmm. uh, she knows how to win. She can handle a pace flow uh, against this group, no doubt about it, and be able to handle the seven-eighths of a mile. She's going to be an awfully short price, I believe, in the nightcap. If you're looking maybe for a horse to pull a little upset, I like your five in there. You know, I, I had that horse like fourth and dropped off the page, but the rally okay. with Ruiz. Yep. But let's look at uh, Shiny Penny. I think yeah. we saw, saw this video yesterday, so hate to be redundant. Uh, who was the horse, the Sanchez Solomon horse off the claim? was a devilish affair, right, right. But this is a good little move here. I like the way Shawnee Penny sat. A little slower pace, though. That's the problem. She, yeah. she took advantage of the flow, was able to lay closer and got that rail open and kind of spurred away. Couldn't quite hold off devilish affair in here, but quite willingly to the wire. At seven-eighths of a mile, her outside draw against this field, she's going to be right. formally placed again. She should stay around. That's Well, so you talk about how she took advantage of this slow pace, but now it's a completely different setup. Mm -hmm. We have this filly in a winning type of mind frame. We Same connections, getting this type, type of results. She's not a bad one to have underneath, and even if you wanted to take a stab at a little bit of a price other than the obvious favorite, mm -hmm. she's the one to do it with. Shiny Penny, absolutely, especially okay. with that outside post. I think Walter Rodriguez gets a lot of run out of this filly, so that was a nice, a nice spot, Keith, on okay. that one. All right. So that was all of our Monday racing talk. Let's talk also about your best play and a mm -hmm. little bit of prices that you have to offer for us today. Yeah, we've got a couple good plays today. It's it's a good betting card all the way through, so I'm glad everybody's card. along. This is our second Monday, so yes. we're glad everybody is with us. You've got a pick five, carry over to target, along with a pick six. So our handle should be strong today. Best bet, race seven, number four, dream big dreams. I'm hoping we get a little speed uh, duel up mm -hmm. front. Source's third time gelding, I think, is really ramping in to what they thought he was going to to be. Mm -hmm. So dream big dreams to rally into it. A couple value plays. There's, I, I think there's a lot of value there's plays. A lot you, of you've value got a horse plays. in the last race with the, with the five that uh, yep. at, at a good price maybe to run into it. But race three, if you're looking for a win place bet and use top and bottom and exactus, how about instigated? A horse that's yep. familiar with the racetrack, I think will be able to r get into good position before rallying at a price. Uh, five or six to one, we'll take that there. Another one, Moco Gold in a loaded yes. field for the two-year-olds, right? Moco Gold, the blinkers have gone on. Gutsy. Different kind of horse right now. Has a rating gear. That's what I like. It's going to be needed in this field because the pace is going to be honest. I like the way she finished up. Very professional last time out. And, that, and that's our race card here for this competitive Monday of racing here. We're mm -hmm. going to check in with Dave Rodman for some changes and scratches. And Keith and I will see you guys Friday for the next morning show. All right. Good luck.